Good everyone, welcome back. Um, as you can see behind me is where we left off, which was getting this uh, leach field filled with sand and uh, all spread, leveled out, ready for pipes. And what you'll see in the uh, lower part of the screen here is the hole for the tank. Uh, the tank is being delivered in two days. So uh, there's a couple little things I need to do, which is make sure the bottom is leveled out, um, has no big chunks of rock in there and just throw a bit of gravel in, uh, just so it's resting on something uh, other than yeah, big hard rocks. And then um, I am going to start laying out the pipes. So four runs of 48 feet. Uh, they're going to need some holes drilled in them to spray out the water. Um, and then when they drop off the tank, they're also going to be dropping off the infiltrators um, and we can get those laid out, get the pipes suspended. First thing's going to be, yeah, getting this hole prepped um, because that's the most imminent thing that's due. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. what the finished bottom of the tank excavation looks like. Um, it's already got gravel in there, but I just added a little extra um, crushed granite. And yeah, we've got it leveled, compacted, uh, so now it's ready for a tank. Now the excavation's all set for receiving the tank. On Wednesday, I can go ahead and start laying these pipes out um, and just do a kind of a, a rough layout, make sure it's all gonna you know, look good and fit the plans. Um, and then, you know, we can start looking at um, fixing it more permanently. got some of the pipes laid out now, but I've come to the realization there's only so much I can do without having the infiltrator chambers that are gonna kind of go over each one to know the exact spacing to make the manifold on the end here. Um, and then, you know, working out the slope of this pipe or the trench that's gonna come through, uh, I'll need to wait for the tank to do that. So I'll just start gluing and making the, uh, there's gonna be four uh, inspection ports in each corner, um, and then there's gonna be a clean out on each end, so I can start doing those and gluing these uh, four lengths together um, until I've worked out the exact length and um, come back and do everything else after we've got it on Wednesday. All right, it's now Wednesday. We've got the truck coming to get the tank in this hole uh, in about 30 minutes, so pull down these stakes um, and get the ladder out and Hopefully it's a pretty easy job, um, but that will then give me what I need uh, in terms of angles uh, because there's not perfect alignment between the tank excavation and uh, what I've got for the leach field. So I'll work out the angle on that, see if I need some uh, little angle adapters uh, for the piping. And then I'll have all my infiltrators uh, and I'll be able to take kind of what's on the spec sheet, um, but just do it in real life. Uh, make sure my spacing on the manifold is perfect for them to all run straight down the middle. Um, so after this, we've got everything we need to kind of finish the job. And that's the tank in. Uh, it was a little more snug than, I don't know, what they normally like. The excavation size, I found out yesterday was supposed to be eight by 13, and I did like 12 by six and three quarters. So anyway, it's actually kind of convenient because we can step across to it now pretty easy. There's not big gaps all the way around, um, and the angle of it is good. Uh, they dropped in the pump and got that all set up. Uh, I've marked my line here, which is straight to the leach field where I start running out the pipes and then yeah I can kind of get that run across get the manifold set work out the width and the heights of the infiltrators and start getting things glued up The 
this pipe's feeding straight from tank out uh, to where our manifold's gonna be. So the manifold is designed to um, provide a consistent pressure across these four outlets uh, that are gonna have holes drilled in them and spray out the effluent. So uh, it's gonna be a little different to how it looks on the plans. I did confirm with the engineer we can just bring this straight in and have a T-junction that goes out rather than coming in from the end and then terminating um, you know, at one end. So it'll have caps on both ends and just join in on the middle, run these four out. So I'm gonna lay out the uh, infiltrators and get those uh, all spaced out correctly and build my manifold off that. Um, and then we can start working on things back in this direction. There's nine infiltrators run out, uh, except for this third one here, which has the full 11 and the end cap. So I put this stake in here so I can measure where I want the pipe to terminate. Um, and I can measure from where it joins the other one, work out the length of this pipe, and then a 90 degree bend uh, and a clean out on top. And we're pretty much done with the pipe layout. Just gotta do the inspection plots after that. And we're done. Uh, it's insanely windy here today, so hopefully you can actually hear what I'm saying. But giving you a bit of a rundown of the now complete system. We've got the septic tank here, pump is in the end closest to me, and it is feeding out through this 1.25 inch pipe to the manifold here, splitting it into four and sending it down in these four runs. There are holes drilled every 36 inches on center, alternating between the 11 and the one o'clock position. And then all of this is covered by 44 infiltrators. They uh, are suspending uh, at the end of each one, the pipe up in the middle. We've got inspection risers on each four corners. They're four inches and they're vented at the top with four holes uh, with a screw off port. And then working our way down, it's hard in the wind today. Uh, here's our other four inspection ports. And then we've got our four clean outs at the end here. These are all kind of flapping in the wind for now because they just need the backfill to kind of hold them in place, but everything's glued and set. Um, these just have uh, end caps on the two inch pipes and they will be covered with valve covers that are just hanging here um, once we start the backfill. So I've got the inspector coming, actually it's the engineer uh, who has to inspect it first, coming in about two hours and um, hopefully it passes. Because as far as I can tell, uh, yeah, it's all it's all two plans. So the only other details I had to do underneath were drill uh, holes in the end of each one as a drain uh, and put a splash plate underneath, which the end caps are provided with. And that's it. So um, yeah, let's see how it goes. So I'm gonna do a thing in every video now, at the end of it, where I talk about what it costs to do the things that were contained in that video, or in this case, the series, which was um, doing the, the groundwork and getting everything ready for the installation of the septic system. So the answer to the big question, how much did it cost? $14,500. Uh, that is comprised of a lot of small parts. Um, the tank being the biggest part wasn't the most expensive, uh, $2,500 for a 1,500 gallon two compartment concrete tank, and that's including delivery. Then the risers and this assembly with the conduit and the distribution box, uh, that's another 500. The pump was the most expensive single component, I guess, with the associated filter and the biotube that everything sits in inside this second riser here, that was $4,000. So if you had a gravity fed system, you could pretty much eliminate all of that. You would not have to get any of that stuff and that would be a huge cost saving. Um, 
Then we've got the black infiltrators, their um, quick four chambers, 44 of those, that was $2,000. And then the sand that everything is sitting on was $2,000 for the sand, $1,500 to get it delivered here, so $3,500. Again, if you had a gravity fed system or some other combination of soil and, and slope where you didn't need that, um, that, between that and the pump, is $7,500 so over half of the cost of this was just in the two components specific to this type of system and you take that out for gravity fed and you have a much much more affordable system than what I have. The piping associated with uh, getting it out, distributed out, the effluent and inspection rises, clean outs, all that sort of stuff was $500 some other miscellaneous costs, uh, the permitting and um, the engineering for this was about $1,000 and then another $500 to rent that um, excavator to do the prep and dig these holes out. So all in, yeah, that's $14,500. Um, when you consider what it would cost for a professional to come out and have done this, um, maybe they would have done it faster, but um, yeah, I still, you know, did it realistically in a month um, and I'm coming out here, you know, one, two days a week. Uh, so it wasn't a huge time burden and they estimated thirty to $35,000. So I've saved a little over half of what it would have cost and I consider that definitely worthwhile for a, a month's work to save 15 grand. And that's it. So we're going to be able to get all our efforts over on the house now and we can kind of forget about this. I will backfill and cover um, just to you know keep it all sealed and out of the elements now um and yeah let's get cracking on that house it's been a long time coming so ready to go for it all right catch ya